darkness, the sweetness, the sorrow, it's all one. The good and the bad, what's past and tomorrow, and it's all one. Seth. Hello, Seth. How are, How are we? you? How are we? Good. How, how's Israel doing? <laughs> well, you know, uh, at home, like most of the world. Um, but um, but we're doing good. I think we're doing good. And uh, we have a great show today. The quarantine is live again. We are all in quarantine and we are connecting through the quarantine. And that's why the quarantine show uh, is, is, is here. That's what it's all about. So we're going to have a great show today. Um, we're going to have a special guest who is a financial expert and, uh, we're going to chat with him on what can we really hope for, be concerned about question, you know, what's going to happen. Everyone's asking themselves questions about the economy, our jobs, our businesses, is going to be back to where it was or not and we're gonna we're gonna have a deep conversation on that we also have a special musical group a band called Mayan band that are going to be with us as well uh, so that's from Toronto be from Toronto we're gonna have all of them right somehow we're gonna have I think they're all gonna be here yeah yeah in a virtual studio so uh, yeah so that's gonna be exciting and um, you know other than that, Stuff, I got some feet. Yeah, I got some feedback this week that uh, one of I heard from uh, a few people actually that one of their favorite parts of of uh, the show is when we interact with the people who are here with us. So let's make sure we try and figure out. I know that our guests uh, is a lot of content today, but let's try and figure out. Um, let's try and figure out how to do that. That's a okay. that's a good that's a good idea. I think we can do two things. One, you guys, everyone who's watching, everyone who's already watching. First of all, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Let's do this together. Let's let's make a connection out of it. That's the whole point really of the quarantine. So tell us where you're watching from. It gives us a great feeling uh, when we start the show to see uh, a lot of places, a lot of people from different places, um, you know, coming together for this, tuning in from different places. So tell us where are you from where are you watching from right now tell us in the chat on youtube on facebook um i see that bertha memo says i can't find the live chat and she says that in the live chat isn't that <laughs> isn't that i was having i also had an issue trying to figure out how to do it so is she on facebook or youtube she's on facebook so whatever you did you did right bertha so uh just just keep doing that Wherever you just typed. <laughs> if, she, if you still have an issue, let us know here. And maybe somebody, uh, one of our friends who knows what's going on can help you. They will. And Asaf. we have Leonard from Western Pennsylvania. Okay. As, and uh, Yelena from New York. All right. All right. Yeah. Asaf, I heard all kind of uh, theories starting to pop out now that everybody has lots of time to uh, get devoured inside the World Wide Web. Sure. Um, that uh, that the coronavirus is caused by 5G wireless technology, which um, disrupted disrupted the environment, disrupted us, disrupted our immune systems. Uh, I've also heard that it's a biological weapon. Wait, wait. I think the the 5G thing, just to get it right. So, yeah. I think I think the the conspiracy theory or the speculation, however you want to relate to that, is that it is in order to help. Uh, help establish 5g like then yeah that's the thing like like no, no. someone so, well, someone I, who wants 5g to happen creates the need by 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 the virus. no no the opposite that 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 they want to put out 5g for whatever business reasons they have but it hasn't yeah. been tested the same way for example asbestos was used i don't know about israel but there was something oh. called asbestos that was used to insulate houses and yeah. then later they find out it's it's uh cancer causing or whatever so Okay. Somebody has um, some kind of business agenda and they are using humans as guinea pigs. They don't test on them to see if it's actually healthy. So they say that the 5G radiation is not healthy for us and it caused this disruption, which allowed the, okay. uh, the virus 
too. Okay. 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 Um, also, um, Bill Gates has been in the news a lot lately. Uh, and yeah. there are definitely lots and lots of stories flying around that the global elites in order to reduce the population, in order to establish their new world order, um, that this is part of, you know, this is one prong of, of their plan. Uh, and there's many other theories out there flying around. And I want to assure uh, our, our, our viewers now that there's actually a, and this comes on very good authority, that there's actually a a bigger force. There's a bigger conspiracy. A bigger conspiracy. There's a bigger conspiracy. There's a much bigger conspiracy. You, if you guys are bigger. looking for for you know unveiling, uncovering the actual you know contriving force behind <laughs> behind all of this, you're gonna get it now. Seth, tell him. <laughs> tell him okay, what it is. Okay. So what happens because we have a one hour Facebook show and because we spend about uh, 30 seconds introducing the show and then a minute talking about our guests and then, <laughs> you know, a couple minutes bantering back and forth. We don't have the opportunity here to, to uh, undress it in a way that it seemed that that is like um, dramatic or maybe as emotional as it actually is. Right. We talk about it in a very, very pragmatic way and to get into it more in an emotional way. So then we would need to, um, you know, people would need to check out the class, the courses or the other videos and things like that. So we have a short amount of time here. We want to bring the what's happening in the world, what we're doing here in quarantine in the light of the wisdom of Kabbalah, but in a very pragmatic way. And it's not, uh, you know, we don't have really time to to get into the you know, what an emotional story it is, because like you said, it is the greatest conspiracy, you know, that we've been living a certain way in a complete illusion. In fact, it says that we'll be like dreamers. We'll literally wake up like the entire life we've lived has been a complete dream. Our, our individualistic, our narrow-minded worldview that had us waking up every day and going out and exploiting everyone we come across in traffic, in the supermarket, in work, in all of our relations at the bar. This egoistic my, uh, worldview that is like the software that we're operating on caused the need in nature for nature to then come and teach us how to come to a path that uh, to kind of do an, a, an update on our software because otherwise left to our own devices, if we didn't have Corona, we would be marching towards a world war right now at a much faster pace. We would be marching towards total ecological collapse and we had no way to stop that. So our life is pretty much worthless, each and every person. The, the, the value, the drama, the beauty comes when we reveal together where we're going. But we see that I could be a millionaire or I can have a small rental apartment. And according to nature, we're equal. I can have uh, five doctorates on my wall, Nobel Prizes, or I didn't even finish high school. And according to nature, everybody go to your little cage, go back to your room like a dog in his dog house, waiting to be told he can come out and get his bone. Spiritually, also nature has been very generous with us and gave us some time to do some soul searching now. And spiritually, uh, spirituality has nothing to do with distance. Spirituality has nothing to do with dollars, uh, how much money you have in your bank account, or how many diplomas you have. Spiritually, we are all equal. Everybody is equally valuable. Everybody is important, and it requires all of us together. Now, not everybody is awoken as as has um, realized what's going on in, in that level yet, and they're still living um, what, what the Kabbalists call in their animal life. Um, but here's the, the stage here. here. Here's the, the conspiracy, though. Here's the conspiracy. Here's the big 
conspiracy for all of you guys who were, you know, trying to uncover who's running the show and what is the show. It's true. There is a show that's going on. There is a script and the conspirator. Is there such a word? Conspir cons cons conspirator. You didn't grow up here, so we let Whatever, you. Whatever, you know, so the, the force that's driving and creating and crafting this narrative, this story is a force of nature. What's when you say a conspiracy, you know, it implies what does it imply? It implies that there is a bigger plan that is hidden from your eyes. And uh, and yet what you're seeing is just effects, consequences that have a deeper root, that have a deeper meaning, that have a deeper reason. And you're just, you know, being played in a way. And it's true, according to the wisdom of Kabbalah, we are being played, but not by any flesh and blood human being. We're being played by nature itself. And what's the plan? What's the play? Where are we going? Where is nature going with this? It's going towards a spiritual revolution of mankind and the entire planet. That's where it's going. And that's why now we're at a point where this coronavirus is 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 making is throwing a good show you know it's basically saying hey I'm I'm the great equalizer I'm going to show you that whoever you are wherever you are how you know how much you have how much you've got you know the haves the haves nots black white yellow red blue you know culture mentality doesn't matter you're all the same when it comes to nature's plan. You're all the same when it comes to the biggest conspiracy in reality, which is to, to, to drive us towards a whole new level of evolution. And why is it a conspiracy, though? Why, why, why is it nature being frank with us? Why, why do we why have it, to... Why is yeah. nature being frank with yeah, us? Yeah, let's talk about that. Why is it a conspiracy? Well, why is nature's um, plan a conspiracy? Why do we? Why is there a concealment? There is such a concept uh, in Kabbalah of concealment. Those who study a little bit or you know have been through our materials may have encountered that concept. Our whole world, in fact, in Kabbalah, is called ol uh, olam in Hebrew means uh, concealment. That's literally what it means. In fact, there is a system of a hundred and twenty-five degrees of concealments from where we are to the final big picture of nature. Why is it concealed though? Why don't we see that we're moving towards a better grand place, you know, a spiritual revolution, a, you know, a, a purpose that is filled with, with, with happiness and joy and pleasure and beyond time, space and motion even, things that are hard for us to even fathom. Well, what is we what it? is the what is the goal? What what is the what is the goal of all this? So, I'll say a sentence. You'll say another one. How's that? The okay, goal. Let's do it. The goal is to take us into something that Kabbalah calls equivalence of form, and that, in simple terms, means that we need to become equal to the underlying force of nature and that is a force why is that good because that force oh, oh, i'm not playing your game yet i'm before we get to the game, <laughs> yeah you're I'm not back you're not playing why, your game. why is that but... why is that good <laughs> it's good because i'm like i'm yeah because I, i'm the voice force, of the of the viewer why is that because good? that force that's driving everything behind the scenes is a force of unconditional love and bestowal of unconditional goodness it is so, so good and loving and bestowing that we can't even understand that kind of love and bestowal because all we can see like you said from our narrow point of view from our short-sighted you know kind of uh, perspective all we can see and feel and experience in reality is all based on you know our ego that we're living in you know which is based on how much do i have what do I got? What am I afraid of? How much does the other one have? What about me? Me, me, me. All these self-concerns, these self-benefits, self-interested concerns, which is okay. That's the, that's the shell that we start, start, 
you know, growing from, but we want to, we have to move towards a much bigger space of existence. That's where nature wants to take us. It's hard to, um, it's like, you know, uh, like in the Alcoholics Anonymous uh, meetings, like their first thing that they do is say like, Hey, I'm an alcoholic. It's like, it's hard for us to really acknowledge the, um, the reality of the kind of life that we've been living. It's hard to acknowledge that there could be something different. It's hard. I, I mean, so we think, for example, my kid needs to be in school and he needs to sit there for eight hours a day for 12 years. Then he know, needs to go to college so that he can then sit in traffic a couple hours a day and then sit in a chair for a couple of hours a day to have a 50% chance of getting divorced and a 50% chance, 40% chance of being obese and a 50% chance of, uh, yeah. of, ha of having depression and uh, whatever percent of the United States population is on antidepressants. And wait, 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 wait. Why do I think that that's normal? Why do we, not why, that's not the question. We think that's normal, right? This we've, whole we've life. We've grown that, used to it. We, you know, habit becomes a second nature and all the more so habits of thinking, these shackles that, that confine our perception. We have, here's what the Kabbalists are really telling us. They're saying, look guys, there's a much bigger party that's going on in nature. And we're missing out on it if we're staying in our little shells. And it's okay that we start from our shell because if we don't start there, we can't grow consciously and independently with our own free choice into being independent, aware, conscious beings. That's what nature wants from us. So we have to start from that limited space, from that limited experience of reality. But there's a much bigger party and that party is not about how much we we manage to you know escape the like you said escape depression you know make sure we don't become addicted to something somehow pass this 80 90 years of life that we have and then throw back the equipment so to speak when we when we finish when we're done with that they're saying look there's a frequency that we need to get on there is a whole different plan that's going on there's a conspiracy but it's a good one and once we understand that we're living in one in a concealment, then we can start aspiring towards revelation. Revelation meaning just, you know, understanding what, what nature wants from us, where nature is taking us. And in the context of today, what this virus is pushing us towards. And, and that's a good thing. The, the virus is arranging everything. We have an opportunity. I'm saying this to Theo and Chris and Yael and Peter and who else and hi alex and, and while you're and, at it we got tony from <laughs> kenya here and that's that's exciting to me because tony from kenya from kenya okay, so on youtube and i see california and northern israel and miami and chicago and a bunch of places wow. but i gotta say kenya that is uh ireland pennsylvania too. he wins yeah, but he, he wins he win, wins the award tony. so here here's what here's what we want to do everyone I see Dina's here. Dina's going to be uh, on the show with some music later. Hi, Dina. And, and Losha. Hey, Losha up in Toronto. Here's what we want to do, everybody. The only thing... Now, of course, you get used to us. You get used to, to Kabbalists. We have our normal life. Okay? You have to eat. You have to live. You have to take care of your kids. So when we talk, the only thing that you have to do... Okay, of course, you also have to eat. You also need to sleep. You also need to figure out if the government's paying your rent or you're still working or whatever. So when we say the only thing you have to do, you have to get a little bit of background about what is the method of Kabbalah, but I'm going to say it anyway. The only thing that's left for us to do is to be concerned with our connection. So Tony from Kenya and our friends from Toronto who are here and New York and Israel and Ecuador and everyone here, what we want to do now be concerned with our connection towards each other in spirituality there's no distance we can give a hug 
to each other now. Let's do that. Let's everybody who's here take a second. Even while we're talking, we can do it. We're that kind of creature. We're not a, a, an animal. We don't, we're not existing as an animal anymore. When the animal has a desire to procreate, that's where he goes. That's what he does. He's not thinking about you know, a sandwich later. When we, when, it, when we have a, a, a desire to go eat, when an animal has a desire, to, a lion has a desire to eat something, he goes and he attacks and that's what he's thinking about. We, we're sitting here, we're on the phone, but we can also aim our inner world. That's what it means to be human. That's what we can do now. So everybody who's here, let's now, while we're sitting here, while we're watching, while we're list, listening, let's start to aim our hearts towards like let's give a virtual hug let's give a hug through the network through the network to to somebody whoever just to everybody here to your mom to 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 somebody and let's let's start to let's start to inhabit the network that already exists the conspiracy is that we don't know that it is because our ego keeps us concealed from the network that exists but it really exists that's what the wisdom of kabbalah is saying that's what we're learning that between and <laughs> and uh, i think this will just be... caught a wave there so thank no, you for no, that. you're right <laughs> i think that's that's uh from that peak it's a good opportunity to actually uh, how would you say, land a little bit into, back into what we are, we think, at least, that we're worried about. And one of the major concerns that people have today is undoubtedly the economy, the, the, the global economics. That's that, a that was huge, a nice transition. Huge, Thank you. <laughs> that's a huge, huge, you know, realm of human engagement that is now in question. There's so many questions, uncertainties, fears, concerns that people have today. And that's why we're going to bring in a few seconds uh, a special guest. Uh, his name is Ronen Avigdol, and he lives here in Israel, but he uh, uh, really understands the global economy uh, in a very deep way with, you know, many, many years of experience in the financial world. He's a financial planner, a financial expert. Um, so we're just going to give it a try. We're going to try to get some answers from his perspective as an economist. And maybe we'll also compare it to, to our perspectives as, uh, as Kabbalists. So uh, let's bring him in. Um, I think any moment. There we go. Yes. Yes, we have him. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Ronena Vigdor, can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right. Hello, guys. All right. So we have uh, Ronena Vigdor here. I always, I already actually introduced uh, you to our viewers, so uh, they know that you are a financial expert, financial planner. You understand the global economy very well, and people have a lot of questions. So let me. Uh, uh, without letting you, uh, giving you a, a lot of time to breathe, let me throw one big question at you right away, okay? So tell us, do you know, do you guys, the economists, do you know what's going to happen? There's a lot of predictions that are going on. Yeah, business is going to, going to you know, go back on track. We're going to see everything just you know, rejuvenating again. It's all going to be the same. Is that really the case or are we, should we expect something else? Uh, I, it is very seldom that economists are right. Basically, most of the predictions. Uh, next are guest, here. please. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> most of uh, most of the economists' predictions are usually optimistic because they they come from interest, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they may be right for the short term, but uh, no one actually has a crystal ball which is which is able to predict uh, really what's going on and everything. Everything right now is very uncertain. And I think uh, just recently, I think today or yesterday, the uh, International Monetary Fund uh, has issued an updated uh, vision about global economy. And as usual, they are fairly pessimistic about uh, 2020, which is actually already lost, I think. It's, it's very clear. But they are uh, highly optimistic about 2021. They say right now, I think uh, their predictions are that 2020 is going to be negative growth of around uh, 3% worldwide. With, with the U.S. minus five and uh, Israel minus six or something like that. But uh, regarding 2021, it's like uh, a boom, really a booming economy, up 4% or 3.5%. So uh, economists are always optimistic. 
Uh, wait, wait. And you say before you get all, uh, you know, uh, arithmetic on, on us uh, with, with all your numbers, <laughs> just, just tell me this. When you say uh, uh, economists are optimistic because they have an interest, mm -hmm. is this true that like when Trump or when, when people, when presidents, you know, world leaders and, uh, um, and so on, when they, you know, talk positively about the economy, it creates a positive economy? They like speak it into existence? Is, is this concept for real? Uh, and, and that's part uh, of the reason? I think it does has a certain impact. If you watch your leaders, your elected leaders, optimistic, and uh, you know that, you know, they say, put your money where your mouth is. So if the leader is optimistic, it, it means actually that he's going to do his best to create the reality he's speaking about. That is why we see central banks, and that this is why we see uh, governments around the world doing their absolutely best with unprecedented uh, uh, means uh, to be to be able to create uh, an, uh, a positive economic uh, reality. Even though we have to admit that their uh, their impact is actually pretty limited, if you look at it like from a perspective, historical perspective. Okay, what are, what, go go ahead, Seth. Scott, what are the things that will determine? Um, a good financial future and um, I'm also not measuring it in terms of we need to sell more crap than we sold yesterday but in general that everybody can um, you know if somebody's working two jobs but doesn't have enough to pay the bills I don't consider that healthy financial uh, life but if someone's working able to pay their bills have some time for themselves to be with their family to take care of their health and things like that I, I would consider that you know much more in harmony and, and uh, a better situation. What are the things that need to happen financially? Um, I guess on a macro view and also on a micro view in order to, to move into, forget about what the, the, these analysts said, in your opinion, what are the kind of things that need to happen so that we can, um, what does the world look like? A healthy financial world look like? Because, you know, millions of cars, burning fuel sitting in rush hour traffic, you know, five lanes both ways in LA or five lanes both ways in New York in traffic. That's good for the GDP. Lots of oil's being burned. Everybody's filling their tanks, but that's, I don't think that's what we're talking about so much. So how can we do it in a way that's healthy, sustainable, uh, good for human connection? Well, basically let's differentiate between Wall Street and Main Street. Let's leave aside the stock exchange and the financial industry and investments. Those are, for many years, have been artificial. They have created their own uh, crisis and their own bailouts. Let's talk about the real economy, the real people. I think this is what you probably meant, uh, Seth. So if we talk about uh, human life and the way we live right now, I think uh, consumerism and the Education we have been uh, exposed to since we were since we were born and throughout our infantry and adulthood is all is very centered about uh, around uh, making money around not just making ends meet but making uh, as much as we can and spending as much as we can uh, and living the American dream and this has been an offset I think we have gone too far and the uh, damages are much worse or much exceed. Uh, the, uh, the uh, advantages and therefore if you, uh, uh, if, if, you, if you look at the future and you're looking for a more balanced future, uh, I think that eventually people will have to understand that they don't buy their happiness. They need to buy their livelihood to make ends meet. But the, all the rest of the energy they're spending right now because they are addicted to consumerism and to fame, to all kinds of values that are, uh, you know, the society is actually inflicting on them. So we need to change the values. We need to have a, like a, a new uh, a social uh, um, agreement between us, which sets the values, uh, updates or really uh, restarts the values themselves. Okay, but this is exactly the point. Let me be a little dramatic here. Okay, when you say the economists are saying we're, it's going to be bad, but then it's going to be better. What do they mean then by better? If we were in in a situation of you know depletion of natural resources and and exploiting the planet in a way that doesn't did not bring balance and you know I, I read some statistics that in the Western world like eighty percent of the people 
wasn't happy weren't happy with their jobs and job you know represents like what 10 12 hours of a person's day in the modern world so most of your life your 80 percent 80 percent of the people are not happy with most most of their lives so when the economists are saying you know or the the, the financial yeah. predictors are saying it's gonna be better is that what they mean but it's gonna get better is I... what what is in the in the economic mindset what 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 is uh, considered you know going back to normal or you know going 2021 is going to be better in what sense so the holy grail is uh, is growth uh, this is the holy grail and this is this was everything it was it, it's worth of us uh, working three jobs making minimum wage of seven or eight dollars an hour it was everything the sacrifices we are making uh, each of us on a daily basis this is like the holy grail so economists are expecting renewal of growth, and 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 of course we have to remember who actually benefits from the growth. This is not like a, you know a trickle down economics. This model doesn't work. So actually, uh, only a minority of us are enjoying the fruits of the of the uh, growth, and the rest of us just the hardship and the hard work. Okay. Um, all right. Saf, I, I got a question. I got a question. You yeah. mind if I if I jump in, R- Ronan? Mm. If we measure success differently, then we may say something else is successful. For example, if everybody has food and everybody has a place to live and everybody has some extra, and of course, if somebody wants to figure out some business and, and make more, that's available. We're in an economy. Everything is growing. People can do it. We're in a world. Resources are available. But if a regular person any person wants to doesn't have some desire that they need to take over the world to be a gazillionaire, but they want to be able to have a home, have food, have time to exercise, have time to be with their friends, maybe go on a vacation, maybe go, uh, I don't know, snorkeling somewhere nice once a year. Something. Is there a way, is it possible to, to change the way we measure? Is that, is that even a possibility for these leaders or with the leaders only, is it possible somehow in this mindset to only measure by more because what asaf said you know the more depressed we were and the more you know fast food we we ate the better it was for the economy so basically the more we killed ourselves and the, the planet better it was for the eco- and the planet the better it was for the economy so it's insane ronan it's insane to measure like that and and Listen, is there, anyone and is anyone thinking about new measurements mm-hmm. now in light of what's happening, you know, with the paralysis of the current economy. Listen, there, there are there, there are various voices, new voices, that are basically saying, listen, we have uh, we have bowed to the wrong uh, holy grail. The the uh, the purpose is being happy, and happiness is not the direct result of of wealth or accumulating of uh, properties, but actually of human relations. And we all know it basically just from uh, expressing our love to to, de- to the de- dear ones and families and close you know close friends of us the joy we get from that is much higher than uh, buying something new at the mall or on amazon uh, but but eventually even though there are more and more voices that are very explicit and they're saying this is this is the right uh, method set of of actually judging and determine how we live and not just by uh, by uh, the current system but those are relatively negligible. The, the establishment is very strong, the elites are very strong. And right now I don't see any any rethinking, really real rethinking of the whole method. The, the expectation is just, you know, getting back to normal. It may take a little bit uh, longer than we expected, but we hope to get uh, back to normal. Normal is the old way. Okay. Um... Let, let me um, throw in another uh, subtopic here. Uh, a lot of people now are considering, ask, questioning, contemplating, uh, and people, I mean governments, um, UBI, universal basic, basic income of some sort. I, I read somewhere that in Spain, they, they, that's it. They decided that from now on, there's going to be a move towards uh, universal basic income, not just for the coronavirus era, but forever. Uh, I know that I, I think in Finland there was an experiment with that with some positive results. Um, you know, there's even Trump bucks in the U.S., which is a form of some sort of a, um, a, and, and you see this entering our world. 
You can also add, you can also add Andrew Yang in the, in the Democratic primaries. He ran his platform and included like a dividend, right? Something similar to universal basic income. Listen, uh, universal basic income is not a new idea, but the current circumstances of very high and unexpected unemployment um, creates the need to enable people to, to live, you know, to, to, to hang by, to hold on until something is uh, stabilized. So the as far as the, as far as the need the need exists now basically Spain cannot afford it and uh, build and, and the Finland uh, actually halted the experiment because it was uh, uh, done in the wrong way and, and, and a little bit uh, uh, negative results and and so, therefore even though there are 70 pilots around the world uh, with societies and states and villages and cities which are experimenting in universal basic income, the truth comes that uh, eventually will the basic uh, uh, disagreement is how are we going to finance it? I mean, universal basic income is going to be necessary. That's what Elon Musk and, and other, others are saying. But how are we going to finance it? This is like a very tough, tough deal. Let me ask a question from a layman's perspective when it comes to economics. When, okay. when, uh, when the Trump administration just signed, what was it, Seth? Uh, what, how much was it? Uh, 20, 20 trillion? To, to, uh, no, no, two trillion. Two, two, two sorry, trillion. sorry, I'm sorry. But still, it's with a T. It's trillion. That's like what? A thousand billion, right? Like every trillion is a thousand billion. That's, is that correct? That's my math. My math at least understands that. Okay. Where, right does, that, where does that two trillion come from? Explain to me. It's like a monopoly money. What do you mean? I mean, they, they, okay, they so, the money. So if it's monopoly money and if they can create the trillions like this, so yeah. there's definitely enough. When we say they can't afford it, as soon as they need to afford it for some reason, they print it and somehow they miraculously afford it, right? Yeah. So kind of Bright, Bright was asking a question about this. How, do, how will society reach uh, these common values if there is some... So first of all... Um, Ronan, we're, we, we happen to be on a Kabbalah show right now. So we are talking about economics. So, so let's remind everyone again that there is such thing as this network between us, that we are the ones who are, there's, no, there's not some uh, global conspiracy that created this situation in order to, you know, even if we see different people taking advantage and some are getting lucky and, and uh, or had good timing or knew about different things that were going to come out. When we connect between us, we establish a new world. We establish, we already see different politicians and different celebrities starting to talk about things. We have the control and the power between us to, to determine what will be. And we have our feet on the ground. That's why it's really important to have friends like Ronan come here and discuss and speak to us about what's literally happening on the ground. We want to know that, but we also... It's really in the hands of all of our viewers here to, well, we're talking about all these things to be thinking, to be making an effort inside to how can I have a good connection? Because Ronan said, when you have those connections with your loved ones, and it sounds like just, we're not talking just, oh, you're going to give a hug, something like that. We're talking about something much more sublime, but that's the basis that we can start to understand that when you're at that backyard picnic, for example, as a silly example, when everybody's there and everybody's got something off the barbecue or something, you don't feel that there's, and that's a very simple example, but you don't feel inside that I need to go buy something on Amazon right now, that I'm missing something in my life. And, and let, me, let me translate this into a question for you, Ronan. Uh, uh, okay, so there are different schools of thought in economics. Is there a school of thought, uh, maybe maybe a new one, maybe not, that is considering this this more uh, this aspect of of you know what actually brings people joy and happiness and fulfillment and satisfaction and doesn't just look at you know human beings as players in this zero sum game and you know just looking to maximize profit. Is well, there a way and is there a way to envision an economy? that will work on those principles? Well, basically, if you look at the uh, Nobel Prize winners in the last decade or so, as far as economics, most of them came from a school of thought which is called behavioral uh, economics. 
which is something totally different because it puts the human behavior, the human nature uh, in the center, in the focus of everything. And it explains everything through human nature and, and human relations. And so this is like now the new consensus. The problem is that uh, most of the behavioral economics uh, concentrates around are we rational or aren't we rational in our behavior? But uh, you don't hear any, any real voices that are actually trying to expand the, the behavior economics into thinking, just wait a minute, the, the method is uh, broken because of the way we treat each other and it can be fixed by, by fixing the way we treat each other. This is something which you very seldom hear, if any. Uh, but basically, there are, there are, here and there, there are some voices, and I heard a couple of your previous shows, and I know that uh, the wisdom of Kabbalah actually speaks right, like this is like the dead center of the message you are trying to convey. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so I'll tell you what. We are, uh, um, let me throw this to you as a, as a final uh, thought um, uh, for you, Renan. So, okay. From the wisdom, from the perspective of the wisdom of Kabbalah, things are not going to go back to normal. And even if and I'm giving you now the Kabbalistic prediction, okay? And I, and I want your your input on this as an economist, Seth. Help me out here if I'm missing out on something. So this virus uh, is the first time in human history where there is a virus in a state where humanity is interconnected across the globe. There were plagues before, of course. Uh, um, but uh, and there were many maybe they were even more contagious or more deadly but humanity wasn't as interdependent and interconnected as it is today and so part of this evolutionary process that we are that we are undergoing and that we're part of is to recognize that we are connected to each other nature is going to nudge us and push us at first gently towards this realization and if we will consciously move towards it and begin to build our economy and our politics and our educational system and our entire world all our social infrastructures if we begin to build them with our interdependence and our connection in mind and then begin to change our preferences and our values towards fostering and promoting human connection more than other material possessions and 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 profit over over people etc if we start to do that even in our thinking then we'll see uh, the economy taking on a new shape that will be in balance and otherwise it's not going to go back to the old world even if it will look like it for a while it's gonna be worse until we we make that shift what would you say to that from from an economist perspective most of it most of it sounds very reasonable you know, economists likes the uh, the basic idea of invisible hand. I mean, we can't really explain everything, but just by uh, each of, each and every one of us that wants only to be selfish and takes care take care of his own business, but but uh, because of the invisible hand, uh, it means that actually the society as a whole benefits from our own individual efforts. That that is why when I when I hear you speak about you know, nature and nature wants, and nature makes us, and nature decides. It doesn't it doesn't really uh, bothers me because this is like equivalent. It's pretty really similar to the uh, to the invisible hands that the, that the economists so so very much like. Therefore, uh, that's fine. I think the interdependency is also very very clear because right now we are seeing it's, it looks like a train wreck. Everybody depends on everybody, and no one actually wins from the current state. So basically, your 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 uh, your assumptions are. Fine, I'm fine with them completely, and not, and that is why I think that uh, eventually, you know, we live we live in the system. Now, if you uh, ob if you obey and abide to the to the laws of the system, then the feedback you get from the system is a positive feedback. And if you yeah, like if you enter a, a manual car and you you neglect the the clutch pedal and you just you know try to by force uh, switching gears, you you ruin the car and, and your experience. But if you treat it, you know, according to the uh, laws of the system, then you, you drive safely and, and, and enjoy your, your, your trip. That is why I think that uh, if, you look, if you're speaking about uh, an independent world, a world which uh, uh, actually the laws of this world is us being together, so we need to create an economy, a system, 
which suits the laws of nature, of the invisible hand. If we do that, we'll get a positive feedback. If we if we neglect to do it, I think the uh, current case shows what's the result, what, what the results are. Beautifully put. Ronan, Beautifully put. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ronan. That was and thank you for coming with an open mind uh, and uh, uh, an open kind of uh, way of thinking for this interview. It was great uh, to have you here. Um, thank you, guys. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people here are are, are asking and um, you know, talking about debt. Uh, and all that. So, you know, if you have updates on, on where this is going or how, um, you know, please come back and talk to us because yeah. it, it, there has to be a way that people are going to still be able to do well in life, but it's going to have to be not at the expense of, of everyone else. It is clearly what nature is pushing us towards. Thanks a lot for joining us. I know you guys, thank you, you very yeah. much. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you, Ronan. Asaf, Asaf, while, while Ronan was speaking uh, at the end there, uh, I was thinking of this. I know it's been in like countless uh, movies or ads or something where like two people are jockeying for a uh, parking spot. And uh, so yeah. there's one parking spot left in the garage and this guy's going and this one's going and he cuts her off and he like, eh, it's not, you know, and like gets the spot. Right. Yeah. Eh, you know, Get out of here! You know I got you, this. You spot. do it, you and do, then you, you play very cinematically. It's a. It's, I can thank you. Thanks. It, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so then uh, the guy gets the parking spot, and uh, he goes into his job interview, and he's waiting in the lobby. And then finally, I say, oh, "Okay, Mr. Jones, ten o'clock. You can come in for your your interview." And he goes and he sits down, and the person across from him is the person who he just, you know, won the parking spot over. Right. And he says to himself, Oh my God, I'm such an idiot. Uh... Right. So at that moment, at that moment, the person who won the parking spot is now sitting there looking for the job. If you could go back in time, if you could understand the system, if they both arrived at the parking spot at the same time and the person knew that that's my boss that I'm interviewing with, or, or the person felt that my good future is tied up with this person's good future. So, Oh, go ahead. Take the parking spot. No problem. I'll find another one. Right. When we feel that, um, that light, hold on, let me see. When, when we feel that it's us versus the world, let me just tell our next guest that we're ready. When we feel that it's us versus the world, um, we have such a different worldview, but in, in, even in that simple kind of example, uh, when we when we think that uh, what's good for this person is good for me, is good for for the whole here, so it just even even like that in that silly example, we can see how our it changes our behavior, and we don't feel we lost anything. In fact, by giving them the parking spot, we feel like we gained something. It's just a different kind of psychological switch. Yeah, I think oh, it's, I don't hear you. I think it's you hear me now. Yeah, yeah I gotcha. I, I think it's uh, it's all about psychology. You can call it psychology. We we need to go through. Uh, when we started the show, we talked about a, uh, a spiritual revolution. Well, you know what? Kabbalist Yehuda Ashlag says that the spiritual revolution is preceded by a psychological one, meaning that yeah, this is what it starts from. Just changing our concept, our thinking. With regards to what is pleasure, what is joy? I start to feel that. What yeah, is I start to happiness. feel what's good for you. Yeah. Yeah. What? what you know, yeah. It's it's um, it, it, just think about it. You know, like um, we have grown. We were indoctrinated and built, grown in an environment where we enjoy hoarding. You know, we enjoy all kinds of um, of uh, of of um, behaviors that are you know who said that's that is what brings the human being pleasure you know science doesn't say that uh, you know science shows that our bodies are wired for connection everything about our bodies needs screams let me connect with other people let me feel sharing let me feel community let me feel camaraderie let me feel friendship let me feel safety you, you, yeah, exactly. Warmth. Confidence. It's love. It's, exactly. It's you know there there's a um, 
studies that show that you you're literally your health deteriorates and to, to the point of even your uh, uh, chain chance of surviving is 50% higher when you feel connected to other people anyways uh, we have some guests here should we bring them on? yeah speaking of feeling uplift joyful uh, on our I first of all I love I wanted to just say thank you to you Asaf for uh, for making Dima hey uh, no, you, you ran out of the opportunity. I'll have to, I'll have to <laughs> save my love letter to you for later. All right. What is happening Hi. here? Hey, what is everybody going here in Toronto. On? Woo. <laughs> wow. We've never had so many guests before. Yeah. So it's a first year on the quarantine. We have Dima and Ernest and Dina and Alexei and Yuri. I'll bring it up. You can just talk about it freely. Okay. Uh, okay, so so this is a, a really first of all, if, you, if there's anything you want to say, we're wide open and, here. And but... I'll just tell our viewers quickly that uh, you guys formed the band in 2016, and you're all based in uh, Toronto, Canada, uh, but you're all coming from different backgrounds, countries, languages, yet you share this common idea and concept and and belief and and goal in life and uh you know study of the wisdom of kabbalah and uh, what really brings you together is this, is this message of unity and connection um and that really is what transcends the boundaries between you guys and your music is also based uh in large on uh kabbalistic ancient kabbalistic tunes right so tell us tell us what's going on <laughs> We should start, guys. We should start. <laughs> There's so many of us here. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll say a couple of words at the beginning. Um, first of all, I'm very, very happy to be here. And I'm very happy to see you all, including uh, Dima, Ira, of course, Dina. <laughs> uh, to, you know, go to uh, get to anybody's calendar is just, you know, so easy to communicate. Anyways, it's not, it's not the topic, of course. So what we do with the band is uh, uh, we are... Taken usually we are taken uh, uh, it's like a thousand years old and we still able to to deliver it to to the people and what we talking about in our music and our in our in our message is all about unity all about connection um, all about together uh, well, I'll, yeah I'll just add that um, what's amazing about it that the songs, the first song that we actually put uh, online was Shalom Alechem a few years ago. And uh, we are getting amazing comments about it. People without understanding the language even, they just say that this music really talks to their hearts. They feel something very deep. And that's the best compliment for us, really, because it comes from different countries all over the world. And that for us, that, that's the main success. I don't know, guys. Uh, although I, I'm happy to see Asaf and uh, Seth, but I'm so happy to see my uh, bandmates, Ernest, Yura, Dina, Alyosha. Unbelievable. There's, there's uh, besides this, uh, obviously, besides this uh, connection uh, as a band members, uh, we feel uh, we feel this inner connection between us and um, and music and. It's specifically Kabbalistic music and and texts uh, really emphasizes, really helps us to to feel each other and um, and to feel the music uh, on, on such a deep uh, and high level that we are just uh, we're crazy uh, in, in wanting to share it with the, with the world. Is there a way in the quarantine to suddenly, like when they're locked, when they, uh, you know, p you know, put away from uh, each other, and uh, there's distance. Now suddenly they want to play and to work together and to collaborate, and uh, we feel we feel the same. So yeah, there there, there are some ways. It, it's challenging, but uh, it seems there like are some, there's a uh, lot of it seems like there's a lot of creativity flowing now. I mean, there's oh. probably maybe, maybe it's just uh, yeah, right. People are thirsty for for any content now, and especially uh, you know music music content. I, I I see so much live concerts and uh, and streams. So we we, we also we my young, we also gathered together and we we did this um, uh, you know virtual virtual uh, 
Virtual Click. session. Virtual session, yes. Did, did, is it public? Oh, yeah. So, you know, oh. my Verbanov. Oh, yeah. Okay, I saw this one. Can you put the, uh, maybe when we're done, uh, if someone, or if uh, maybe when someone else is speaking, you can do it here. If you can put the comment in the, uh, in the chat here, so that if anybody wants to see the, uh, wants to see what you were working on, you could put it in there. So how, how do you do that? You use some platform like uh, like Zoom, or or how, how do you, or is it some kind of secret? It, yeah, partially it's a secret, okay. uh, but yeah, but we yeah, we we gathered on Zoom. Yes, uh, actually we decided that uh, in order to get uh, to go to to get spirituality, you need to first have a Zoom account. And then you can start it. <laughs> um, I want to challenge you. Um, first of all, uh, we're going to try to play the song uh, live um, right here at the end of the at the end of this broadcast. So uh, uh, our viewers can uh, can expect that. Uh, hopefully it'll work. We are experiencing a, a f little bit of a technical problems with the stream, but uh, let's hope it'll work well. Can you guys uh, try to explain what that is about it's in hebrew right and uh can you try to explain what it's about and how it relates to what's happening in the world today is there a way and maybe even so so what it's about how it relates to the world today and then we have a question from um, i hope i get this right obiodun oyelakin maybe i got it right it says what is the easiest way what is the secret of nature to be able to solve our problems as a kabbalah student so if you could basically tell us in this one performance how you sum up all of the secrets of the universe that would be great <laughs> it's, it's an easy it's an easy, it's an easy, one. Yeah, it's an easy, easy one. question come on uh who wants to answer <laughs> okay let me let me let me uh open with the what the song is about so the song is called amal urbana and uh uh, the, the, the text is taken uh, from one of the uh, uh, Shabbat prayers, the evening prayers. But Sung is t telling this story very short, like two, uh, actually two lines of, uh, of Passover story. It's all about uh, how Israelites um, uh, uh, crossed the Red Sea uh, while exiting Egypt. So for us, it's not only a biblical story. For us, it's the exit from the current state and transforming to the next stage, which is higher, which is better, which is a um, new state. So for us, it's also the meaning is in uh, leaving all that we used to behind, all things that we used to, uh, and, and crossing uh, over something, which is, which is uh, a Red Sea in, in a song, uh, towards a better future, towards um, uh, a future, let's say. How how, did, how is that done? What, when when you're singing the song, what is the emotion you're putting in? What do, what are you so are you every, aiming yourself to, to? Yeah, yeah. So every single time that we perform the song, first of all, the uh, arrangement was made by Dima, and uh, there are a couple different parts even within one song. There are uh, there is a cappella singing with no instrument. There is what is it? <laughs> there is uh, um. Uh, uh, instrumental part, there is vocal part, um, there is all together and there is one solo instrument. There's so many uh, um, different parts within one song and it's all, it, it all meaningful for us. Every single part is, is by itself a separate part and all together they put together the harmony, the, uh, the musical composition, the, the arrangement and so on. I just can add that, that for me, every time we perform, every time we record or we're live with the audience, um, <clears throat> I always, there's this moment before we start when, when we try to feel each other, first of all, when we create this field of connection between us. And that's what we want to pass on to people, this feeling of something common, uh, this warmth. And um, I think that's, that's really important. It's like, you know, tuning before uh, every, every, everything that, that we do. Sorry, I think we talked too much, friends. Maybe no, someone yeah. else wants to add. Yeah. <laughs> um, 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 yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Ura. Go ahead. I, I was just, I was just going to say, I was really uh, intrigued when when uh, Losha spoke about uh, how it's about 
moving away from what we were used to from what we were and you know crossing into some new dimension almost and it's almost like everything we were talking about today so go ahead you are yeah i just like to continue with um, as i've said and Lusha. the biggest change we're talking about it's actually happened in our uh, hearts and our minds and the values we put in uh, as a current essential the point of why we're doing this, why we live in this life, why we sing this song, why we live together, what make us meet each other, and uh, what kind of values we want to put as the most important in between us, the trust, connection, love, care, you name it, you know, something with fundamental, but we forgot about this. And that's why the whole nature, the whole system, the whole existence pushing us to, to look again. Again, why are we here, basically? And uh, and this song is not uh, an exception. It's basically telling us that uh, what is this Israel? What is this the part? What leading you want to know to be together? Thank you. This is the this is the music of the future. That's the kind of uh, connection. We didn't even hear the style yet, but already. Um, it's, it's the not uh, about the purpose. Self- the- the purpose for which music will be made in the future. Which is like the economy we just talked about. It's really interesting. So I think you guys were watching. If you weren't, we we had an economist on before you. And there's something about the new future that's become clear to me uh, during the show that it's not about whether we're talking about uh, you know, hamburgers or music or whatever it is, the new world that we're entering into has to be with this new, new software, this new way of relating to each other. And we are each in our dog houses now. We're each in our cages now. And uh, we're not waiting for anybody. We don't have to wait for any politician. We don't have to wait for any the uh, supreme leader, some any Dr. Fauci, any I don't know who you have in Canada, uh, but we don't need to wait for the Center for Disease Control right now. We can do what Dino was saying that they do before the for playing a song. We can tune our hearts to each other. We're really short on time, and we want to play. Um, I think the video Dima that you were discuss we were talking about. Uh, is there anything else you want to? Um, anything important that we need to know about you? And maybe also say where can we, uh, where can viewers, you know, watch and tune into your stuff and, and you know, st- um, be alert when uh, when you have something new. And maybe Ernest can say a word too. I would like really just first of all to great opportunity to see you to admire what you are doing at these times. That is the most important to keep everybody safe and strong and and give the hope for the people. And I believe that through our connection, our unity, our love, whatever we are values that we are willing to share, and they give hope from Corona to Keter, I believe that is the best times that we are able to deliver from our hearts for everybody else. Thank you very much, guys. Lechaim, you are the best of all generations. Please continue. Thank you. Lechaim, brother, thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, so you can find us at um, myanband.com website we also have youtube channel with all the videos that we posted so far Gosh, if you spell it i'll type it right now in the oh, chat on facebook yeah yeah i actually yeah i actually posted it already oh you chat. posted it already the okay great youtube okay, link great. yeah but it's all connected so youtube has also facebook and instagram and also website facebook oh, there it is. Okay. They all Wonderful. anyways it's Mayan with two a so m-a-a-y-a-n.com Mayan band oh sorry my band yeah all right, myanband.com. One, 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 one second. I want to add something that now we're going to listen to this song, Maver Banov. I, I want to uh, I want to ask all the listeners and the viewers that uh, don't think about uh, Jews exiting Egypt and uh, God is uh, taking uh, the, uh, you know his people and taking out of Egypt. No, think about now. Think about now. But uh, whereas nature is pu- pushing you, pushing us. Uh, where we have to go now like we certainly like for sure we have to go somewhere like we can't stay in this uh, in this state so so when, when you listen to the song think about this feel it good 
All right. My unbanned Mavir Barnav, and we are signing off. Thank you everyone for watching. Enjoy this from my unbanned. Mavir Barnav, Mavir Barnav, Ben Gizrayam Suf. Mavir Barnav, Mavir Barnav, Ben Gizrayam Suf. Atrot Bahem, Atsonehem, Betu Motiva. Atrot Bahem, Atsonehem, Betu Motiva. Rau Shmoke